before we can get to where we want to be, we have to know where we are exactly. Where are we exactly with Rizal today? Let me ask you a few questions about our national hero. Do you know his full name? I'm sure you know about Nolly and Philly, but do you know where they were printed? Do you know who defended Rizal during his last days on Earth? Or do you know where Rizal wanted to go to volunteer as a medical officer for Spain? Now based on your answers, you decide. Where do we stand with Rizal? But the most important question is, is Jose Rizal still relevant to us today? That's a big question and that is exactly what is great about this book. That is what's great about Rizal without the overcoat by Ambeth Ocampo. It makes Rizal very readable, relatable. He makes him a real person. I can imagine him to be much like me or you. He scrims and saves his allowance so that he can buy books. He's just like any other student. He was counting pennies, much of like many of us in UP do. And when he didn't have money, he was too proud to let anybody know. I feel like after reading this book, I could be Rizal. That I'd rather not splurge or use my savings to treat my friends to drink and have a good time. Or I also debate with priests and people older than me. Uh, sometimes place emphasis on the wrong things, on pomp and pageantry instead of faith, God, and helping the poor. Ambeth Campo was right in writing this book. He was right about Rizal. The man is more interesting than the hero. How he wrote about Rizal makes me like the man more. To know that though he is a genius in so many ways, he was not perfect. Just like me, he couldn't sing. Or maybe I even sound a little better than him because I don't sound like an ass as he said he does. The insights into his character enables me to see Rizal with a fresh set of eyes. Given the time he lived, he was a man of many accomplishments. He not only rose above the limitations of his era, but he sought to change the circumstances that surrounded his life. Of particular interest to me was when I read that Rizal the man is a myth, even a god in the eyes of a cult that lives on to the present day and the people who dwell in the sacred mountains of Makiling and Banahau. I was amused that such theories of Hitler being progeny was easily debunked by research. I simply dismissed the thought that he was Jack the Ripper. But I love the fact that he was an artist and drew comics adapted from fairy tales. In between the gossipy, familiar tones that Dr. Ocampo adapted, you can glean how Rizal's intelligence made him an even more sensitive patriot. Dr. Ocampo wrote a lot about how well-traveled he was, but what struck me most was how Rizal must have felt about what was lacking in his country, how limited freedom is in the Philippines. When he sets foot on foreign lands, Rizal must have felt more acutely the suffering of Filipinos as he saw how life was in more egalitarian Berlin or Paris or America. Could you imagine how much he must have longed for more equality in his home country? But to his credit, he never stopped trying to affect meaningful change. In many instances in his life, he sought to be the change he wanted the world to be. He acquired the best education he can get. He honed his craft by writing again and again, day after day. He believed that a better way of life can be made to happen, which is why he decided to bring his whole family to Saba to start over. When that didn't happen, he again sought to change the Pitan, his place of exile, by instituting changes that directly impacted people. He taught fishing, he had a school for the youth, he became a farmer and tilled the land. He treated patients who went to him, believing he can cure them. Of course, we know now that the mercury he used is toxic, but that was a time when medicine was not as modern as it is now. Dr. Ocampo's pension for using great detail and illustrating Rizal's life also enables us to see how important one's upbringing is. Rizal's family was important to him. He loved his nephews and his nieces. He respected his brother Pashano. 
and he loved his parents and worried about how his chosen path have brought them troubles. This book, this book reveals Rizal the genius with his warts and all, all his shortcomings. Not everybody will like him, as Dr. Acampo says, because he was too serious. Maybe in millennials speak a nerd or a geek. As Dr. Acampo said, Rizal wouldn't even win in an election as he was too serious and didn't even want to treat his friends. Kulang sa PR, basically. And like me, Rizal was sensitive to what critics think of his writing. For example, because he held Marcelo H. Del Pilar in high regard, it mattered to him what that man thought of his novels. He was not confident in his Tagalog and he was open about this insecurity. But I believe that like all else he put his heart into, he could have learned to write in Tagalog well. But what makes me like Rizal even better is because he stuck to his guns. He was proud of being a Filipino, even before it was fashionable to be so. He believed in the Filipino, in our culture, in our way of life, and deplored its loss or its submission to the Spanish way of life. Ambeth Ocampo made Rizal real, and his beliefs believable. He revived my patriotism. I too love my country. I too love being a Filipino. At the most crucial moments, Rizal decided to step up. He had a sense of destiny. He believed that by dying, he could be a solution or maybe a source of happiness and inspiration. He came home. He came back, though he knew he would be at the very least arrested and could possibly have been killed. And nagkatotoo What he dreamt of years ahead of December 30, 1896 came true. For this reason alone, I refused to think Rizal as a national hero was foisted on us by the Americans. Dr. Acampo was right as he showed in his book how Rizal was held in esteem by the Filipino leaders at the time. Bonifacio consulted him on the revolution, sending Pio Valenzuela all the way to the Pitan. Catepinero said his name is a battle cry and maybe even like a prayer. Even the Spaniards gave him the importance he deserved. They thought he was a man to kill and the revolution will die with him. But of course, we know that went the other way. For all that Ambeth Ocampo did to bring us the little known trivia and insider information on Rizal, that he was only 5 feet and 3 inches tall, that he liked Tuyo, that he wasn't really the top of his class, 8 other classmates were ranked so Brazilian to like him, that he tried hash and perhaps even had a night on the town in the arms of a street walker, that man stands tall, a giant among men, a hero among men. Yet knowing what you know, let's think about it, in this digital age, if a friend Mubasha, if Rizal were an FB, this is most likely what he would post. I know he'd react to news, politics, elections, the economy, to mother's concerns on education. Which of his posts would you like, share, comment on? Go ahead, like Mo. Suffice it to say, Rizal, without the overcoat, deserves this. Because I feel that Rizal should live on and live on in us all he shall. That's all.